ओके सो नाउ वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग एपोटोटिक प्रोटीन एंड देयर होमोलॉग्स इन सी एलिगेंस नाउ लिसन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर फ्रॉम द एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू नाउ लिसन विथ ऑल योर अटेंशन लिसन सपोज दिस इज अ सेल वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द मेकानिजम ऑफ एपोटोसिस अगेन and then we will try to put the homologs there okay now listen this is a cell and this is suppose the mitochondria okay the mitochondria okay now what is these things what are these things this is back and backs right they are inhibited by they are inhibited by bcl2 bcl2 okay they are inhibited by bcl2 right now listen with all your attention suppose this cell has decided to undergo apoptosis what will happen is this first what we will have to do is we will have to remove these inhibition so that The, these proteins that is back and backs can oligomerize right if you don't if you don't know what is the function of this please go through the other videos okay In great details we have already discussed now listen suppose if we want to kill this cell via intrinsic pathway with the help of intrinsic pathway then we have to oligomerize these you know proteins this back and backs right bcl2 now first things first if if i if i want to kill this cell via apoptotic intrinsic pathway then i will have to first remove this bcl2 that means i should have a mechanism i should have a mechanism by which i should have a mechanism by which i should have a mechanism by which i can inhibit bcl2 first so that this inhibition is removed right we already know some proteins beam right beam right and you should also know another name that is suppose this is, this is a dna or this is a nucleus and there is dna and uv light is falling on this dna you know dna will be damaged and in response to this a protein will be produced known by the name of puma known by the name of puma this puma also inhibits bcl2 okay beam puma etc okay puma etc now listen so first things first if you want to you know oligomerize these proteins that is these are back and backs back and backs if you want to oligomerize this back and backs so that they can form a channel for cytochrome c we will have to first remove this bcl2 we will have to first remove this bcl2 from their site because they are inhibiting the oligomerization of what back and backs suppose due to these proteins beam puma and all we have removed this inhibition we have removed bcl2 inhibition after that what will happen is this back puma will now actually form a channel right they will form a channel they will oligomerize to form a channel through which through which cytochrome c can be released after the formation of after the coming out of cytochrome c what will happen is cytochrome c together with apoph1 apoph1 cytochrome c together with apoph1 will form will form apoptosis will form apoptosis apoptosis will lead to the activation of procaspase 9 to will lead to the activation of caspase 9 caspase 9 will lead to the activation of pro caspase 3 to caspase 3 right 
Now listen with all your attention possible. We were, we were talking about the homologs in C. elegans. That means instead of these proteins, C. elegans uses some different kinds of proteins which works like this. What are the proteins? Listen. Whenever we are talking about C. elegans, now we should talk about something called CED proteins. Listen. There are actually three main three classes of proteins: CED, CED9, 4, 3. CED9, 4, and Okay, now you should always remember that, listen, what is CED9, where is CED9, suppose this is a, you know, suppose this is, suppose this is a C elegant cell, suppose this is a C elegant cell and if I draw this diagram, and I tell you that where is CD9, where is CD4, where is CD, CD3 hidden, probably you will, we won't be able to understand because this is according to you, this is a C elegans, if it is a C elegans, you know, cell, then these proteins should not be present because these are, these are human homologs, these are mammalian homologs. That means CD9, CD4, CD3 is present in C elegans, but in different names, that means Cytochrome C, APOF1, C, uh, Cytochrome C, oh, sorry, not Cytochrome C, APOF1, apoptosome, um, Caspase 9, Caspase 3, Beam, BCL2, these are all present, no doubt about this. But they have some different names in C. elegans. Okay? Now, the different, you know, the difference between the names are, they are represented by C, E, D, this, these three, you know, letters, three alphabets. Okay? Now listen, where is CED9 present in this diagram? We will first talk about CED9. Where is CED9 present in this diagram? Where is CED9 present in this diagram? Listen. The CED9 is actually present in this case. That is, CED9 is actually CD9 is actually a homologue of BCL2. That means, suppose if I, you know, draw here, C elegans, human, suppose. In C, in C elegans, CD9 does the work of BCL2. Okay, so these are, you know, suppose this is a C elegans cell, so we will have to, you know, change it to CD9. Now listen, these are all CD9, right? Now, what we will do is, we will actually change the name of these proteins which are already displayed here, that's it. Then you will understand. So this is a, as this is a C elegans cell, so we will have to change the name of this, you know, BCL2 proteins. Okay, now, where is CED? It's like a puzzle, play it like a puzzle, okay? If you, if you want to know, Okay, great details of this. Okay, in the in the in the future classes, we'll obviously know the great details of this. How this CD9 works? How this CD3 works? Don't worry. No, in this diagram, just tell me where is CD4? Okay, that means what I am saying is where is CD4? Means which portion or which you know heading I will have to you know. Erase and make it right. Is it Caspase 3? Is it Caspase 9? Apoptosome or where? Listen. CD3 is present here, sir. Oh, CD4 is present here, sir. CED4 is present here, sir. App of 1. For CD, for C elegans, this is CD4 and for us, it is App of 1. Okay. Now, where is CD3 present in this diagram? Where is CD3 present in this diagram? Caspase 9 is known by the name of CD3. That means CD3 Caspase 9. Okay. Now understand this very basic concept. 
there is another protein now listen why i have drawn this it's very important for you to understand now listen we have already discussed these things right now listen you should always understand that if i tell you something that you know this this was actually bcl2 and bcl2 is actually inhibited by beam puma right which is coming from damage signals now listen listen all with all your attention listen with all your attention beam puma now listen there is a homolog of this beam and puma in c ligands what is the name of this you know homolog the name of this homolog is e g l 1 this is e e g l 1 this is e g l 1 okay so e g e g l 1 in c ligands e g l 1 in c ligands is equivalent to puma puma beam or simply put it is equivalent to pro apoptotic proteins okay okay that is not enough now listen you know sometimes in your exam it is given like this egl1 or like this egl1 ced9 ced4 like this so what they are saying is this how these proteins how these proteins actually are controlled in a linear fashion okay we will have to know this things now listen before that you have already you know copied this thing you know the homologs okay now listen i will be drawing i will be representing i will be representing a mammalian cell here and i will be representing a c ligand cell here okay now listen this is c ligand cell and this is mammalian now listen this is mitochondria right these are backs now this is also mitochondria right they are inhibited by oops they are not inhibited by bcl2 they are inhibited by cd 9 they are inhibited by bcl2 so now if you write here bcl2 inhibits what back and backs right now write here cd9 okay now listen no it's very important but now puma bead beam is all the classes of these things inhibit bcl2 right and cd4 is also inhibited by their homolog that is egl1 right that means cd9 is inhibited by egl1 this is this relationship is very important okay now 
if the dimerize suppose if the dimerize they will give out what cytochrome c if the dimerize suppose somehow the you know bcl2 inhibition is lost and cytochrome c is released what will happen is together with apaf1 together with apaf1 they will form apoptosome sorry sorry, sorry. together with cd4 they will form apoptosome that means cd9 inhibits that means if cd9 was working that then cd4 would not have worked that means cd9 actually inhibits cd4 okay now listen now apoptosome leads to the activation of caspase 3 via activation of caspase 9 right what is caspase 9 what is caspase 9 cd3 that means when cd4 is activated okay this should be cd3 right this should be cd3 when cd3 is activated that means caspase 3 will be activated and here what is this you already know cytochrome c then app of 1 right app of 1 then apoptosome leads leading to what caspase 9 then caspase 3 okay so this relationship was important for your exam okay you should always remember and you should always draw like this okay so we have already discussed in great details the homologs in c elegans okay okay so for apoptosis you can go through all these things and you can go you can go and look into the you can go and view the videos okay for any query thank you you can tell it on the in the next class okay thank you